Yo, 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 it is your boy Adam Co. A little different video today. Um, I got some requests that they wanted, the people wanted me to do a top 30 prospects video. And I'm okay with that. I love talking prospects. So we'll get right into it. Top 30 prospects for the San Francisco Giants. Um, I'll talk about where they were picked, their size, where they were from college wise, but what position, how old they are. I'll even say. Um, you know, what, what year I expect them to arrive in the major leagues. Um, and I'll compare them to a player that, uh, I saw in the video and some of these guys I've seen in person play. So we'll get right into it. First guy probably watched the most film on this man. Um, a guy that it was like, it was like looking in the mirror you know, watching film on myself. Um, I don't want to toot my own horn, but toot toot. I was a decent player. I was a decent baseball player. Decent ball, ball player. Played a little D2 ball, junior college baseball, second baseman shortstop, a little third. And this is the guy right here. Dallas Paptis, 21 years old. Shortstop, second baseman, 5'10", 185. I would hate to get drafted like he did. And then Keith Law, the prospect expert, say is a real reach by the San Francisco Giants right here with the 68th overall pick. Whatever, dude. Hey, that's fine, though. That's fine. If I was him, it's all up from here. Whatever he does is going to be a success. Uh, elbow surgery last year, so he didn't play the field, but he just raked. He's a singles hitter, didn't hit many home runs, just like I did. Just base hits, get on base. That's what he does. Um, below average speed, but he he will still bag. He will he will swipe a bag when you know he doesn't expect it. I compare him. I'll just get right out to it. I compare him to Dustin Pedroia. I'm not saying that he's going to be Dustin Pedroia. I don't want to put that pressure on him. But this is how, you know, he's a ball player. Dustin Pedroia, ball player. Wasn't the fastest guy. Wasn't the strongest guy. Not the, fa the, the tallest guy. But he was a ball player. And this is what I see out of this kid. I watched a lot of video on him. Um, he's a number 30 pro prospect. I could see him going up, up, up uh, the prospect list you know, to the teens just after this year. Really wanted to see him play minor league baseball, but of course, no one's playing minor league baseball. Um, so we'll see next year. Hopefully, he'll end up in San Jose, and we'll we could watch him there. Twenty twenty three is when I expect him to arrive. Uh, so just a ball player. His power will come. Um, he's not going to be a crazy power hitter, but I could see him in seven or eight a year. Um, and his average could definitely be over three hundred in the major leagues. So really excited about him. Uh, I'm rooting for you, Jimmy. All right, that's the first one. Boom. Number 30, gone. Number 29, Grant McCray. Florida high school guy. Um, 19 years old now. He was 18 when we drafted him. Outfielder, third round pick. Uh, six foot two, 170. That's where he's got to get the work in. I know he's only 19, but once he gets that to uh, 170 to 190, that the double, the singles turn into doubles, the doubles turn into triples with his speed. He's a big speed guy. Speed kills. Uh, so it was a really low risk, high reward pick here. You draft him in the third round, not a high school and see what happens. Develop him, gain some weight, gain some power. And you never know what could happen with this kid. Really athletic, raw talent. Uh, you like to see that. So I expect him to come maybe 2024, let him develop, play a couple of years in San Jose, um, then work his way up to the you know, double A and triple A. I compared him to Aaron Hicks. It was kind of tough. Aaron Hicks is a switch hitter. Grant McCray is not a switch hitter, but I saw a lot of similar similarities in his swing, uh, and his speed in the outfield. Grant McCray, not as good as arm as Aaron Hicks. Aaron Hicks has that cannon, of course, but you never know that could develop as well. So really exciting player. We'll see what he, how he does in the minor leagues. Um, and if he can get past that single a, that's the biggest <laughs> obstacle, but getting past single a into double a, then you start. Okay. Grant McCray's coming. So that's the first two. Next one, Sean Roby. Really interesting guy here. 12th round pick uh, in 2018. Six foot two, 215. Big body, third baseman. I see him more as a first baseman rather than a third baseman, how they drafted him. And he's playing right now. He's out of Arizona Western Junior College. Love the junior college guys. Like I said myself, junior college guy. The talent, people always think junior college baseball is this, you know, bottom of the barrel. No. Just baseball, man. If you're playing baseball against another team, there's everybody's trying to make it to you know that D1, D2 level. 
And we can start in junior college. A lot of good players start in junior college and work their way up. So uh, he has as well. 12th round guy wasn't really highly scouted. Now look at him. He was in spring training a couple years ago, and he did well. They had a tough time dropping him down to minor league camp because he was hitting doubles, extra base hits, home runs. So they finally had to drop him down. They, they knew he wasn't ready. He's only 22, 20, I think 20, 21 at the time. Um, but he impressed everybody. Um, plus pop, he's a polished hitter. His, his, his bat's probably ready for the major leagues. His defense, he gotta fi- he's got to figure out a spot for himself. Is he, If he's going to be a third baseman, is he going to be a first baseman? They compared him to David Freeze, which not bad at all. A veteran guy who hit well in the, in the World Series, big hits in the World Series, was a really good third baseman for a long time. Then he switched over to first baseman as a first baseman later in his career and was a great vet. You know, So if we get a you know, Sean Roby, David Freeze uh, comparison, that would be great. I compared him to Darren Ruff just because Darren Ruff's kind of athletic. He wasn't a third baseman, but he's athletic first base. Maybe Sean Roby can move to left field at some point as well in the future just to give him a little more, you know, something else added to his game. But very interesting guy. Big body, big pop. We'll definitely see him in the major leagues somewhere at some time. Jake Wong, next pick, next prospect, number 27. Uh, Grand Canyon College, same college as Tim Salmon, the old Tim Salmon. Uh, So 23 years old. Third round pick in 2018, uh, six foot two, 215. So he's got the body of a pitcher. Uh, his fastball went down. It was at 96. It was more of a top out at 96, and is now at like 92, 93, sitting there. Um, he really needs to work on his command. That's his main thing. I think dropping his his velo uh, might be a good thing for him. Maybe you, you get, he finds a cutter that is you know that works for him. He finds you know corners instead of trying to overpower everybody and starts to pitch instead of just the thrower. So. That could be where he could um, improve his game. I think he's going to be a better bullpen guy than a starter where they have him right now. They have him starting games. Mm, I don't see that with him. Uh, Maybe his velo will go up uh, just like a guy who I compared him to, Wade Davis. Wade Davis, I don't know if you guys remember, he was a starter. His numbers were terrible. His career, over. Nope. Moved him to the bullpen. And he ended up being one of the better bullpen arms and relievers the last, you know, four or five years. Uh, he developed a cutter, like I said, and he was throwing harder. So this is a Jake Wong and, you know, the next guy I'm going to talk about as well. So, yeah, Jake Wong, 2022 probably arrival. Uh, he gets hurt. All these guys get hurt with the coronavirus uh, and no minor league baseball this year. Everybody could develop. Everybody needs at bats. Everybody needs to see live hitters. And it hurts. So, it is what it is. Every team's dealing with it, so we can't cry about it. <laughs> Next guy, like I said, is another guy, Jordan Humphreys, um, a guy we just got from the Mets. He was an 18th round pick for the Mets, but he moved his way up into the top prospects for for the Mets. Um, he had some injuries, which kind of dropped him um, his stock. Uh, he was he's 24 years old, so he's he's ready, uh, but the injuries dropped him down a little bit and delayed his his MLB time. Um, so. I mean, a guy that you get for Billy Hamilton, who really had no spot on the Giants anyways um, and never really has hit in the major leagues. His speed's always bid there, obviously. But even on the Mets, the Mets need a guy when Cespedes opted out, so they got Billy Hamilton from us. Farhan was like, go ahead, take him. We got Slater. We got Yaz. Uh, you know, we got Ramos coming up. Go ahead, take him. Uh, we had Pens at the time, too. Go ahead and take him. We'll take Jordan Humphreys, your like 11th best prospect, and see what happens. If he low risk, high reward again, forehand. Why not? Why not do that? So I compare him to Sean Anderson, a guy that we also got in a trade, a trade, a trade, a trade from the Red Sox, the Eduardo Nunez trade. Uh, we got Sean Anderson, was a starter. He tried to start with us, didn't really work out. So they moved him to the bullpen, and he's found his, his spot for us. He's pitched well this year. And uh, he has closer stuff. So hopefully Jordan Humphreys, same kind of deal. I estimated him to arrive at the end of 2022. Okay, Stay away from injuries, and you'll be in 2022. First five are done. That was fun. Let's keep going. Number 25, Camilo Doval. Right-handed pitcher, Dominican Republic, 23 years old. They have him estimated to arrive in the major leagues at 2022. Personally, I think he's ready, and I think at the end of this year, 
especially if we make some trades at the trade deadline in this next week. We can move up. We can move this kid up right away. He's at the alternate site right now, and they said he's pitching really well. Uh, I said he's developed a little cutter. Uh, he's throwing for strikes. He's six foot two, one eighty. Um, that'll only go. It's gonna go up uh, with time. Um, eating major league, you know, spread after the game. He'll go to one one ninety, which will probably just pull up that velocity a little more. He's a little slinger, arm slinger. I like this guy. I followed him on Instagram. He had like 200 followers. Wasn't a, you know, not a big prospect guy. He followed me right back that same night. Uh, and then he followed me on Facebook. So I think we're buds. Me and him, if you guys want any information, I'll let, I'll let you guys know. Me and Camila go way back. He's a sidearm slinger. And I compared him to Trevor Gott. I know it's kind of touchy, a little touchy right now with Trevor Gott, but you, you can kind of tell when you see him pitch. Uh, he's got that whippy arm motion. And he's got, you know, all he needs is that changeup against the lefties. He has a really good slider. It's like a little Sergio Romo, you know, slinger. Phew. No dot slider, but um, he needs that third pitch. They said he's working on a cutter. That's good, but he also needs a changeup against that lefty. Really excited about this guy. Hopefully he can come up by the end of the year. That'd be really exciting. Uh, I saw a lot of this guy in San Jose. Everybody else was throwing 92 out of the bullpen, 93. And then he comes in throwing 99. 98 consistently. He actually had 100 the one game I was there. So exciting arm. Really exciting arm. We need righties as well, especially with all these lefties in our bullpen. You still need some righties. We only have three at the moment in the, in the major league. So same thing goes with the next guy. Number 24, Melvin Adon, a right-handed pitcher, Dominican Republic, 26 years old. He's been in the in the minor leagues for a long time. We've heard Melvin Adon is going to be the closer. He's going to be the closer. No success in the minor leagues. Uh, little success. So he'll get on spurts. Well, And he came up uh, a couple years ago. And major league hitters just hit him. His changeup, wouldn't th- he w- couldn't throw that first strike. He couldn't throw the slider for a strike. The slider's nasty. Just couldn't throw for a strike. And if you're not going to throw a slider for a strike, and all they're looking for is one pitch, that 101 miles per hour fastball doesn't look so hard when you're looking for one pitch. It's easy to hit. Major league hitters adjust to it. Cody Bellinger's, Corey Seager's, Justin Turner's tee off on that. So he needs to get that slider for a strike. 6'3 with 246. I mean, that's a big boy. Huge arm, um, huge body. He needs to figure it out right now. His estimated rival, like right now, like last year. We need him now. Um, so get going, Melvin Don. We're all rooting for you. Uh, hope you, you, know, you don't end up being a bust. But, and I don't want you to get traded somewhere else and then do well there so we want you to work here um hopefully soon i mean this is another guy if we make trades um at the trade deadline we could easily move this guy up um to the major leagues i compare him to pedro baez you can kind of see why pedro baez big body um about the same size so that's why hard thrower melvin adon number 23 casey schmidt this was the hardest one I, i took a long time writing my notes on this guy san diego state guy 21 years old Drafted as a third baseman, but he also was a closer last year, and he had good numbers as a closer. But they drafted him as a third baseman because they wanted him to be a third baseman. Six foot two, two hundred pounds, huge body, good pop, great arm as a third baseman. That's awesome. Um, but it's kind of hard to compare the guy because he didn't wasn't consi- he wasn't an everyday third baseman for him. He was also the closer. So um, and he. So I compared him to Todd Frazier just off of the swing that I saw off the film that I saw from third base. So I'm going to throw the pitching stats out of the way, all that. I don't want to compare him to anybody as a pitcher because I don't see him as a pitcher. Maybe if he really struggles as a third baseman, um, we could move him to, uh, as, a, as a pitcher and he could try it again, but he's a third baseman. That's why I drafted him. So they said the pop is coming. They he only hit like four home runs last year at San Diego State. But at the Cape Cod League, after the year, he played, and with wood bat, he was hitting more home runs. So maybe we found a little diamond in the rough here with Casey Schmidt. Um, number 22, Kai Wee Tang, right-handed pitcher out of Taiwan, 21 years old. This guy's body, six foot four, 260 pounds. Woo! I'll take that all day long. We got him out of the Sam, the Sam Dyson trade last year. Sam Dyson threw like two innings for the Twins after the trade, got hurt, hasn't pitched all year. Meanwhile, we got 
Ty Wee Tang, Jalen Davis, who we've seen, and Prelander Baroa, another young prospect, like 19 years old, throwing hard. For Sam Dyson, Farhan, why are you doing this to the league? You're turning into like a Bob Myers for the, the Warriors, killing it. Comes over, does nothing but dominate after the trade. Kai Wee-Tang does. 7-0 in low A, Augusta. He's got that big body. I could see him in the middle rotation going forward. 2-3-4 guy. Um, I think he's one of my favorite prospects other than Seth Corey. But I could see this guy. If he could keep pitching, he could be 23 years old going up like a Logan Webb. Twenty, you know, the end of 2022. I'm rooting for this kid. He's got the stuff. Um, I follow him on Instagram, and he posts a lot of videos of him just throwing bullpens. And man, he's got a his curveball, a little slurve thing, nasty, with a you know a 93, 94 miles per hour fastball, and that'll just keep going up too. Um, all these guys, I just wish they were throwing games in the minor leagues right now. It's, it's frustrating. Number twenty one, Averson Artiaga, probably the guy that I know the least amount of and I think a lot of um, guys that will look over the prospects don't know much about him as well uh, we signed him last year Venezuelan shortstop uh, he's only 17 years old so plenty of you know years to develop um, six foot one 170 not too bad actually for a 17 year old uh, they say he's got plus plus defense plus plus speed but the bat needs to come around okay Venezuelan shortstop plus defense, plus speed. Who am I going to compare him to? Think about it. I'll give you a couple seconds. Think about it. Omar Vizquel. Oh, yeah, you said Omar Vizquel? Yeah, Omar Vizquel. Is he going to be Omar Vizquel? Probably not. Let's hope so. Probably not. Venezuelan shortstop. You guys had to do it. So don't know much about this guy. I'm not going to talk too long about him because he's got so much time, but I'm rooting for him. We're all rooting for you, Averson. Artiaga. Remember that name. We'll talk about him in a couple years. <laughs> Number 20, last five. That went fast. Hope you're having fun. I am Logan Wyatt, first baseman out of Louisville. 22 years old, 6'4", 230. I uh, saw this guy. Uh, we, we, we drafted him, and then we watched. You, if you watch the College World Series, Sirius, him and Tyler Fitzgerald, uh, who's also in the farm system, shortstop, uh, his teammate, we drafted him, and then they did well in the College World Series. He's kind of like the Brandon Belt 2.0. Not crazy pop. His average is like 300 every year in the you know in uh, at Louisville, and then when he when he showed up in the in the farm system, gray die like Brandon Belt. Average hitter like Belt. He could play left field like Belt did. He's a good athlete. Belt, eh, kind of younger. So I mean, he's there. They kind of drafted him to be like the next Belt. We'll see what happens. Six foot four, two thirty. He's got that body. Hopefully, he can get a little more pop. You can go from Brandon Belt to like maybe like Anthony Rizzo. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. So we're rooting for you, Logan White. He's got that body. Get some pop. His defense is not the same as Belt, but you can work on that as well. That's Logan White for you. Number nineteen, almost done. Tristan Beck, right-handed pitcher out of Stanford. Fourth round pick by the Braves. 2018 we got him in the mark melanson trade last year that that uh trade deadline last year is going to be the thing that tr that changes the whole organization isn't it mark melanson sam dyson we're getting all these prospects for nothing guys that weren't we didn't need uh and it could have been will smith as well uh we ended up getting a compensation pick for him but like we could have got more for in that uh, in that uh, trade deadline. So impressive stuff. Six foot four, one hundred and sixty five pounds. Six four is great. Let's get that one sixty five to like a one eighty five at least. I know he's a skinny guy, but let's get a little bit of bulk on him. Um, fifth starter for him. I could see like a fifth starter, fourth starter for him. I uh, pitched well though when he showed up. Went to San Jose. I saw one of his starts and his his fastball was like ninety three, but it looked explosive. It looked like he was, you know, guys were just a little behind on it. You know, 20, 93 is not great. It's good, but it looked like the guys were way behind on his fastball. And he had a nice little off-speed slurve. So maybe that's what it was. They were just off balance. He has a little change up as well. Uh, I compare him to Ross Stripling. I think this is a good one because Ross Stripling, um, he wasn't the biggest guy when he showed up. But he, you know, the last couple of years, he's really gotten, uh, he's gotten big. 
and he's, his velocities went up, which would be great for Tristan Beck. Uh, Stanford guy, hopefully he can end up being like a Mike Mussina Stanford guy. Uh, estimated arrival 2022 for me. I think he needs a couple, you know, a year to at least um, develop and get a little bigger. Like I said, maybe 2023 is, is a safer bet here. That's all I got on Tristan Beck. Rooting for you as well. Luis Basabe, number 18. We talked a little about him in a in a daily breakdown video when we did uh, trade for him. We got him from the White Sox. He's a Venezuelan guy, 23 years old, outfielder, six foot, 180. He's got the speed. He's got the power. He's got the arm. What are you doing, White Sox? He was, he was going to be one of their guys. They have Eli, Eloy Jimenez, Luis Robert. Maybe they're just thinking, well, they have all these other guys. Nick Mariscott, we can go all day with the, the, the farm system they have over there. Do they just think he's not going to end up being in that outfield? I don't know, but we'll take it. We will definitely take it. Uh, I could see him as a 2020 guy, 20 stolen bases, 20 home runs. He's got the pop. He's got the pop. I watched this kid in the Futures game. I, don't, I didn't really know who he was at the time, but I remember seeing it. Hunter Green, a Reds pitcher, uh, top prospect for the Reds, throwing 101. 101 miles per hour fastball right in the middle at Nationals Park. He went dead center, like 420 off him, like 104 miles per hour off the bat. So he's ready. He's got the bat. He needs to develop. He needs at-bats against, uh, you know, in the minors, which hurts him as well. The injuries in the past have hurt him as well. He's seen less at-bats in the minor leagues. But he's on his way. I think the strong arm's going to help him as well. Being a right, he could be a right fielder for us with speed. Uh, he could play center field as well. Uh, so it'd be impressive stuff. He could do that. I'm really excited about him though. Really excited about him. There's another low risk, high reward. We got him for nothing, just for cash. If he doesn't work out, so be it. Uh, I think he might. If, like I said, if we make some trades, never know. They could pick him up at the end of this year. Probably next year at the end of next year though. It's probably a safer bet as well. They want to see him develop a little more. I compared him to uh, like a young Dexter Fowler because I mean switch hitter. Dexter Fowler had really good speed when he came up. Still has a little bit, um, and he had some. You know, Dexter Fowler ended up having some pop as well, close to 20 home runs, uh, more like 15 a year. So Luis Basabe, excited for you, buddy. I'm excited about all these guys, though. I can say that about every guy. Number 17, Gregory Santos, right-handed pitcher, Dominican Republic, 20 years old, really raw. Raw talent here. Six foot two, 180. That's going to go more like 190 uh, to 200 when he ends up coming uh, to the major leagues. And I say 2023. That's probably a safe bet. We got him in the Eduardo Nunez trade, too. That's the second time we talked about the Eduardo Nunez trade. Sean Anderson, and this was a throw in piece, Gregory Santos, who's ended up being now he's the 17th overall prospect for us. So exciting stuff with him, plus fastball, plus slider. Needs to work on that, that changeup. Change it to lefties is important. You could have a great slider and fastball, but lefties love that slider down and in. So need that changeup to go away from him with the fastball. Raw talent, like I said. I compare him to Michael Pineda. I like this comparison. Uh, I could see it in his uh, motion, in his stuff. Michael Pineda had some injuries in his career. He was a pro top, top prospect coming into the major leagues. He was traded for, I think, Jesus Montero from the, the um, Mariners to the Yankees. And he had a lot of injuries. He ended up having a decent career. Uh, still was with the Twins. Uh, he, so hopefully Gregory Santos could be that guy. He could be a bullpen guy as well with his velocity. Maybe they want to stick him in the in the bullpen. But you want to stick him in the rotation as long as you can until you just you, you see that he, he, he can't withstand being in the rotation in the long run. So hopefully he can, though. Last one for this video. It was, it's been, this has been fun. I don't want it to end, but we're going to end it right here for this video. Number 16, Blake Rivera. Fourth round pick in 2018 out of Wallace State Hansville City College. Whew, that's a mouthful. I'm going to compare him to a guy that also went to this college. Craig Kimbrell, ever heard of him? Closer. This kid's going to be our closer at some point. If It's either going to be with the Giants or it's going to be with somebody else, but he will be a closer in his career six foot four 225 can't ask for a better body frame for a pitcher big big body um big velocity he's got that closer stuff best curveball in the farm system they were even saying best curveball in the draft in 2018 when he showed up so his era has been you know kind of high for for how good his stuff is they got to figure that out 
but I think they will figure it out. And uh, I think the end of 2022, probably more like the end of 2023, though. Uh, let him develop. Let his you know his ERA go down a little bit and uh, figure it out in the minor leagues so that when he comes up, he's ready for us. Blake Rivera, remember that name, guys. He will be a closer in this league at some point. That is 30 through 16. Went fast, like I said, but we'll, we'll go into 15 to 1 in a future video very soon. Very, very soon. Let me know in the comments how you like it. If you have any comments on any player, let me know. We could talk in the comments. Um, if you want me to do anything special for the next video, 15 to 1, let me know. Um, and let me know if you have any other recommendations for videos. I love doing these prospect videos. I'm really excited that I finally get to do it. I like to research these players and watch video on them like I've been doing. Uh, and like I said, a lot of these guys I watched in San Jose with the San Jose Giants. I, I'm now living in Texas, and it, it hurts. And not, I can't watch these guys in San Jose. But there's not even minor league baseball anyway, so not missing anything. That's all I got. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Go